Yuck. Hello everyone, this is Lucas and today we're dealing with DIY rust remover. And here we have molasses rust remover culture live live. I put live because this is a live deal. I have it sitting on top of a little piece of styrofoam here in a three gallon pail that I just keep in the floor of my shop. Um, and it will keep alive all spring, summer and fall as long as it doesn't freeze, it will keep alive. And all it is is a mixture of fermented molasses, water and sugar and some iron oxide. So I fill, to start this mixture, um, what you'll do is you'll fill up a three gallon bucket like I have here to the same line I have here. You'll throw in a carton of molasses and about three cups of sugar to start and you'll put the lid on it loosely and let it sit for two weeks. After two weeks, you're going to get a mixture that kind of smells like dirty feet and that's what you want. Uh, you're also gonna wanna throw in a little rusty bolt, just a small one, a single rusty bolt. And uh, after two weeks, you're gonna smell something that smells like dirty feet and it may be a little bit odd. Um, it smells good, but at the same time, it smells bad. It smells like something you can eat and it probably tastes good, but I'm not gonna deal with it because it kind of smells like a cross between rotting Coca-Cola and cheese. That's the closest I can explain it. So what you do is, is you just throw any rusty item you have in here after the culture is going and what'll happen is, you will get this black nasty film. I'm trying to find something in here that has it. My camera failed on me last oh guys, I got that everywhere. I gotta I gotta clean it up. If you spill it, you gotta clean it up. It does smell like rusty feet. So if you look here on this, you see this black film that is coming off on my hands. Everywhere that there's rust. See it right there? The yucky black film. And I'm just rubbing it off. And this is an old bicycle chain I threw in here. And anywhere that black film is where the microorganism is converting the iron oxide back into an iron and I threw a magnet in here and if you leave a magnet in here long enough it does really weird stuff to the mixture and that you'll actually get the magnet will actually start to um, develop scum and stuff on it because I've thrown magnets in here before that had an iron shielding that was really like rusty or whatever but you see I see how the rust just comes off and I'm left with this blue steel so I'm going to show you all the rusty things that I've thrown in here I'm going to give an example here here's the magnet right here Let's see if it's got the scum on it yet yeah the magnet is starting to get scum on it see the magnet will collect the scum in like huge amounts but okay so I've got this rusty plate in here that I had sitting in here for um the duration I'd say this has been in here about a month but I left it like this so you guys can see the difference between what is below the water and above the water so as you can see above the water you have all this steel and then below the water you have clean totally clean you can use this stuff in order to prep your um work if you got like weeks um to wait um well all this stuff um eats all the rust off your work if you want to prep your work like if you want to do it for welding and stuff this is a good way to ensure that you got nice clean metal um this hinge has been in here this is an antique hinge it's been in here at least two months and i'm actually now starting to use it i'm able to use it again and it takes about two months for this stuff to creep into the threads or into the mechanical action of things. So this may sound really messed up, but it is possible to like throw an old two stroke engine in here and leave it for two months and then come back, clean it all out and start it again. I know that sounds nuts, but I've seen even the most rusty things that you wouldn't believe come back out of here. So I'm gonna keep that one today. What else are we gonna fish out of here today? I got a bunch of stuff we're gonna fish out of here today. Uh, I got this drywall knife see all nice and clean blue now again this was rusty i'd found that this is all stuff i found or fixed uh this is an old mac tool see this is what i mean by the scum see the magnet and the mac tool is picking up all that iron scum see that it just pulls it right out of the water look at that iron scum sorry so this mac tool the shaft on it was all rusty i found this this is a nice screwdriver. It's all clean now. It's got magnets in it though, so I'm going to have to clean out all that rusty scum. This is an old jackhammer bit, which I'm going to turn into a throwing dart. Uh, and I put that hole in the bottom of it. See, it's all nice blue steel. You wouldn't believe that's a jackhammer here. These old pair of pliers have been in here forever. These side cutters. Uh, I've been waiting. They're still not ready yet, so I'm going to leave them back in here. But every time I go in here, I clean off another layer and they slowly look like more of side cutters. I find a lot of tools on the side of the road between Edmonton and Spruce Grove. And the ones that are really bad, this is where I put them. Uh, this is a socket. It's not ready yet. You can see 
it's ready on the one side but not the other but that's the side that was laying on the ground so you can kind of see you know the history of some of the stuff i pull out of here this is a drill adapter for a socket this one's ready to come out uh, all kinds of stuff things that you wouldn't believe that are just absolutely rusty yeah there we go a carabiner that works on springs see it got into the spring of a carabiner and fixed it this is a socket I only put in there three days ago, so it's not ready yet. I gotta give it another month. I'm gonna find some more rusty stuff to throw in here today. But yeah, um, for something that smells like dirty feet and you only have to use sugar to feed, um, I feed this every month about another two cups of sugar and top up the water and make sure everything's still smelling like dirty feet. You may get some like yucky stuff around the top of it that smells like cheese, that's normal. Um, it'll stain your hands if you stick it inside. As you can see, I now have iron like in my hands which is weird i don't know if that's good for me or bad for me but i haven't had any issues so i'm not worried about it i, I think this is pretty much non-toxic i wouldn't drink it or eat it even though it smells nice but don't do it um yeah you can use all kinds of stuff to clean this try to make sure that whatever you put in here is dry with no chemicals um if you can clean all the chemicals off the better this is a biological culture and if you shock it with chemicals you will kill it um you can multiply it pretty much easily once you get a culture going you don't have to wait so much if you take half this culture and then um half and half it top them both up and put rusty items into it you can fill two pails after you get a culture going and then after everything in those pails are clean then you can half those again so you can multiply this mixture really easily it's not something that um you need to be uh, uh overly conservative about i mean everything it's you know it's cheap it's cheap to make um, oh, if you're wondering why the bag is in here, this is a corn plastic bag, and I'm wondering if the culture of um, this uh, uh, this microorganism will eat it. Um, it won't. Um, this has been in here all summer, and it hasn't degraded at all. Well, maybe it has a little bit. No, it hasn't. Okay, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and please support us on our Patreon. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. Um, I'm starting up a Patreon because I can only make these videos. Um, right now, we run on, you know, scraps and finds and whatever we do, and we just, you know, make these videos with whatever we have. Try to give you guys out there in uh, YouTube land as much information as we can with what we have. But uh, I created the Patreon because that way it gives us um, access to funds to buy more materials and that kind of stuff to teach you guys some more hacks so that we're not waiting for um, the right scrap to fall in our laps in order to give you guys the information that you may need in order to get something done easily cheaply or maybe salvage something or create something or fix something um, I'm all about making my own things and doing things out of things in this world and making uh, life better for everybody out there that's why I make these videos um, I've had people over the years teach me so many things on YouTube that have just you know made my life so much better so these are my way of giving back and yeah the patreon is set up so we can make that even better so if you like these videos again give us a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll be back with some more